Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Alaska pilots may soon face additional fees and taxes. Lockheed Martin test pilot reaches 100 hours in the T-50A. And FAA proposes revision to AD for some Turbo Bonanza airplanes. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's November 13th, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Airplanes are vital to Alaska. There are six times as many pilots per capita and 16 times as many airplanes per capita as compared to the rest of the U.S. But Governor Walker wants to make it more expensive to fly there. The governor has proposed a state airplane registration system that would be used to create a database for instituting an airplane tax. The tax would be $150 on any private plane, single-engine, twin, reciprocating, or turboprop, and $250 on any commercial aircraft of any size. Walker has openly called the tax a user fee. The airplane tax would bring in between $1.3 and $1.5 million each year. The state is also considering a motor fuel tax that would include an increase in the aviation fuel taxes. Money raised through the aviation fuel tax would go into the general fund and not be reserved for aviation purposes. Commercial airlines that are based out of the state will be exempt from the registration requirement, but in-state airlines would be required to pay. Alaska's DOT says the tax is necessary because aircraft owners should pay for their use of the aviation system in the state, and commercial interests should pay more because they use more of the services. The proposal is currently open for public comment. After the break, Joan registration included in DOD authorization bill. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. The dream is real. A truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics personal jet kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit plus engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. A defense authorization bill that includes a return to civilian drone registration has been approved by House and Senate Conference Committee and is expected to be passed by both chambers and signed by President Trump. The language is included in the National Defense Authorization Act of 2018. It would again require the registration of drones weighing more than about half a pound with the federal government. During U.S. President Donald Trump's visit to China, Juniao Airlines reached an agreement with GE to order GE NX-1B engines to power its 10 Boeing 787-9 aircraft. The agreement was witnessed by President Trump and China President Xi Jinping. The engine order is valued at $1.4 billion and includes a 15-year True Choice overhaul agreement with GE Aviation for the time and material to repair and overhaul these engines. The aircraft will begin delivery in 2018. The 20-year-old Pasco Washington man who was operating a drone that impacted the top of the Space Needle in Seattle on New Year's Eve 2016 has been charged with reckless endangerment and faces a fine and jail time. Cole Kelly was operating the drone that impacted an area near pyrotechnicians who were getting ready for a midnight fireworks show to ring in the new year. There were about half a dozen people on top of the iconic structure when the incident occurred. Two Canadian airlines have announced that they will be curtailing flights to St. Martin in the Caribbean for the winter season due to damage caused by Hurricanes Irma and Maria. 
Princess Juliana International Airport suffered severe damage during Hurricane Irma in September. Repairs to the airport have been estimated at up to $100 million. It has been operating out of temporary facilities since reopening to commercial traffic on October 10th. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Lockheed Martin test pilot Mark Red Ward reached a new milestone by becoming the first pilot to reach 100 flight hours in the T-50A. They are offering for the USAS Advanced Pilot Training Competition. Ward passed the 100-hour mark shortly after takeoff from Greenville on the way to the 2017 Joint Base San Antonio Air Show and open house at JBSA Lakeland Kelly Field Annex in Texas, which took place November 4th through 5th. In February 2016, Lockheed Martin announced the plans to offer the T-50A in the APT competition and build the aircraft at a final assembly and checkout facility in Greenville. The FACO and Operations Center formally opened in August 2016. Flight operations began at the Greenville site in November 2016 as the team worked toward a March 2017 proposal deadline and submission of the required flight test data at the end of June. The T-50A is ready on day one of the contract award and is purpose-built around fifth-generation thinking. It will train the U.S. Air Force's F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II pilots of tomorrow, as well as pilots for frontline fourth-generation aircraft. After these messages, FAA proposes revision to AD for some Turbo Bonanza airplanes. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. The FAA has posted a proposed revision to an MPRM for an AD that originally applied to models A36TC and B36TC airplanes. The revision adds all Textron Aviation Incorporated models, S35, V35, V35A, and V35B airplanes that have optional turbocharger engine installed. The original NPRM published on April 12, 2017, was prompted by a fatal accident where the exhaust tailpipe fell off during takeoff. Since that NPRM was issued, the FAA received information that Textron models S35, V35, V35A, and V35B airplanes could have turbocharged reciprocating engine installed, either at manufacture as an optional installation or post-manufacture as an STC installation. Either engine installation would include installation of an affected V-band coupling. The NTSB requested that the FAA add repetitive visual inspections of the V-band coupling. The NTSB noted that the FAA included repetitive visual inspection of the V-band coupling in a previous AD affecting Piper Aircraft Incorporated airplanes. They believe a similar repetitive visual inspection of the V-band coupling for the airplanes affected by this proposed AD, in addition to the proposed life limit, would help identify the cracks before failure. The FAA estimates that this proposed AD affects 731 airplanes of U.S. registry. Comments must be received on this SNPRM by December 26, 2017. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is currently on our winter schedule and is streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.